Hello, this is Rachel, and today we're covering Topic 5, Building Rapport, in our Supervision Curriculum Series. So when we talk about building rapport, we, in behavior analytic terms, are talking about making that person into a conditioned reinforcer. So that person is being paired with fun things, with enjoyable things, so that the individual finds that new person, generally a provider, um, enjoyable to work with and to be around. Rapport is defined as some degree of trust that a person wants to spend time with the individual uh, with whom they have rapport. So how do we go about building rapport? It's not as automatic as just play with the individual. There are some things that we can use to operationally define our strategies for building rapport so that we can be more successful. Um, we do want to pair the novel individual, the uh, provider probably, with items or activities that are already reinforcers for our learner or at minimum with items or activities that are preferred, even if they don't necessarily function as a reinforcer. We might use novel items or activities. We should be attending to the individual. We should be expressing interests in that learner's interests, doing what they want within reason, um, and being fun and enthusiastic about the activity. So specifically, I have found that a good way to operationalize building rapport is to use the pride rules, which come from Sheila Eiberg and uh, Parent-Child Interaction Therapy. So these are the pride rules as written in that therapy manual. Um, the first one is praise. We want to use, um, we want to praise appropriate behavior using descriptive praise to acknowledge what the individual is already doing that we like. So it lets the individual know that we approve of and encourage them to continue to do that. Some examples, great job pushing the car, or I really like how you're matching the colors. Now, like I said, what's on screen is the pride rules from PCIT. Uh, so the language is as it was written in that manual, which it generally is focused on parent child interactions and building rapport between um, parents and children where there may not be a lot of rapport. So when I speak, I'm probably, hopefully, going to change all of the words to learner, individual, um, even though they say child here, you can generalize that to any individual with whom you want to build rapport. The specific examples here are going to be geared towards children, because like I said, that is how the pride rules are written, but the concepts can be applied to any individual at any uh, with any level of skill set so r stands for reflect and this is reflect or repeat back those vocalizations or vocalization attempts or communication attempts so you want to repeat or expand upon what the learner has said this models the appropriate language and also lets the individual know that you understand and value their communication you might model appropriate or expanded language, but you're not going to require the individual to copy you or to say it better or express it in a different way. So some examples, the individual is pushing a car and they say vroom, and the provider says vroom, the car goes vroom. Um, the child uh, might say, the learner might say, cookie please, and the caretaker might say, cookie please, I want a cookie please. So they repeated it, and then they expanded upon it, but they didn't require the individual, the learner, to copy that. 
I stands for imitate, and this is going to be imitate or follow the learner's lead. Um, you want to follow their lead. What are they interested in? What do they want to play with? How do they want to play with it? Um, this might be getting down on the floor and rolling cars at eye level, if that's what the learner likes to do. Our goal with building rapport is not to teach a different way to do things, it's to connect where the learner already is. Um, you could model some things, so I'm pushing my car and then I might also crash it into something or make it roll further, but my learner does not have to play with it in the same way. I am following their lead, their interests in what they want to play with and how they want to play. So for example, the learner is playing with Barbie dolls. And so you also play with the Barbie dolls. The child or the learner is drawing. And so you are also drawing alongside of them. D stands for describe. And this is gonna be describing the learner's behavior. Um, I find that this one serves two functions. First of all, for the learner, you are describing what they're doing. So you're modeling appropriate language and you are um, basically giving a play-by-play -play of what they're doing. So they're maybe learning some new concepts, learning some receptive language skills by hearing you describe what they are doing. Um, but I also find that this is helpful for providers to focus on describing so that we don't accidentally um, ask questions so we don't want to ask questions oh are you pushing the car oh are you coloring we have eyes we can look we can see what the learner is doing so we can label it you're coloring you're pushing the car you're playing and so you're just labeling you push the car up the hill the car is going down the hill you crashed the car you got another car it is, is it is especially good for learners who don't engage in a lot of communication attempts so we aren't having a lot that we can reflect back but instead we can label and describe and still provide a lot of language instead of sitting together in silence unless your learner prefers silence and quiet and then you can do it quietly or occasionally E stands for enthusiasm. We wanna be enthusiastic, energetic, and this lets our learner know that we enjoy spending time with them. This could be in your affect, this could be in your tone of voice, this could be with your body movements, it could be um, making some appropriate physical uh, contact if the learner's okay with that. So a high five, a pat on the back, thumbs up, those types of things. So praise, reflect, imitate, describe, and enthusiasm. Those are our pride rules. If we keep those in mind, we have a more specific uh, plan for how we can build rapport with a learner besides just play with them. Ideally, you'd want to spend at least five minutes a session working on your rapport. So during this time, you're not going to place demands on the learner. Um, you're not going to ask questions because questions are demands. They require a response. This is free play. This is a time for you and the learner to interact, play together with no demands on the learner. If there were and again, I'm using the language from the PCIT manual. If minor problem behaviors occur, so if the learner engages in some slightly overly adapted behavior, you want to try to ignore that behavior and give attention for more appropriate behavior. If, again, in their words, major problem behavior occurs, then you would deal with it as you normally would or as according to the behavior plan or whatever. And then when the situation is resolved, then you would try to come back and build rapport again. So in a rapport session, there could be instances where overly adaptive behavior occurs and it's not possible to continue the rapport building part of the session, in which case it's okay, put that to the side, um, resolve the situation 
help the learner work through that overly adapted behavior and help them be successful in getting their needs met. And then you can come back to, at a later point, the rapport building opportunities. So during rapport building, we want to avoid commands or instructions. Commands are statements that try to direct the play by suggesting what the learner could do. There are two types of commands, direct, sit down, hand me the car. There's also indirect, which is sort of this um, polite version where we might phrase an instruction in a polite way, but still expect the learner to follow through. Um, would you like to sit down? Let's put the cars away. Those sound nicer, but um, sometimes they are phrased in a way that we expect the learner to still follow through. We want to avoid those type of commands. Commands can take over the play and then the learner is no longer leading and therefore we're not following the learner's lead. Um, if the learner doesn't follow those instructions, if you are giving instructions, then the play can be not fun and you're not going to make yourself into a conditioned reinforcer if you are instead pairing yourself with unfun activities, potentially aversive situations. You also want to avoid questions. Um, questions require an answer from the learner. There are two types of questions. There are questions that ask for information, um, who, what, where, when, how type questions. There are also sort of these insincere questions where your voice goes up at the end of the sentence. Um, and they might be hidden commands. They again, take the lead away from the learner. And sometimes when we ask questions, they can suggest disapproval. Oh, you're coloring the sun purple? Like, okay, yeah, so why are you questioning that, right? You could say, you're coloring the sun purple um, instead of asking it as a question or suggesting some disapprovement, uh, disapproval of that uh, choice. You also want to, while you're building rapport, avoid criticism. Criticisms are negative or contradictory statements about the learner or their actions. You're not nice. That doesn't go that way. That's wrong is a criticism. It goes like this could be a way to show or help um, the individual on how to perform a task without criticizing the attempt that they have already done. We want to ignore as best we can the overly adapted behavior. Um, ignoring only serves to decrease attention seeking behaviors. Um, some attention seeking behaviors might be yelling or whining or um, knocking something over if the learner is trying to get your reaction from that. Ignoring would only be effective if the learner was trying to get attention and they found that it was easier to get your attention by engaging in something different and you praised that. This is not a behavior plan. This is just how to respond in the moment when you're building rapport. Oftentimes our beginning sessions with learners are building rapport sessions. So we may not have a full behavior plan yet. We may not um, be placing, well, if we're building rapport, we're not placing demands. So these are situations where we're basically trying to keep things as fun and exciting as possible without getting into any um, overly adaptive behavior. But if it occurs, we want to pay little attention to it. We want to avoid any reactions. And instead, we can continue to engage in an appropriate behavior. Um, to hopefully redirect the learner when the learner engages in something that is different from that overly adapted behavior we can attend and we can praise to that and this could help with minor behaviors that somebody might um 
just by default sort of uh, critique or try to work on and building rapport, we don't want to do that, but we do need to have a strategy in place. So our assignment is to provide three examples of provider behaviors for each of the pride rules. So three examples for praise, three examples for reflect, three examples for imitate, three examples for describe, and three examples for enthusiasm. You also want to list three ways to play with blocks. So this is where you want to be creative. What are some different things you can do with blocks? Don't just say build. Um, you can also, or number three, also list three ways to incorporate music. Again, be creative. What are some ways to incorporate music into activities? And this is not to say that you have to use blocks and you have to use music when you're building rapport. The purpose of these two questions is for you to think about multiple ways to incorporate things into activities. And then question number four, um, we're going to work on our operational definitions, but I want you to operationally define good rapport between a provider and a learner. So what would the learner be doing in order for an observer to agree that the learner and the provider have good rapport? If I were to walk in to a session or watch um, a learner and their provider out in the community, how would I know that that learner has good rapport with that provider? How, what would the learner be doing? Would they be close by? Would they be looking at the individual? Would they be um, communicating with the individual? What would the learner be doing that would suggest that they get along well with that provider? And then the resources below um, also include the Pride Rules handout, which again is straight from PCIT uh, manual so that you can see that handout. All right, that was Building Rapport. Um, thank you. Again, if you have um, answers to those questions and you want feedback, drop them in the comments below. And if you'd like to catch all of the videos of this series, feel free to subscribe. Thanks.